Hello and welcome to another video of Sociology Education. My name is Alejandro Garcia Maynes. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like and comment. Visit my website down there. And well, today uh, I'm going to give you just an introduction of uh, the sociology of the languages and how the languages work in the society and how the languages divide the society into different uh, social status, into different religions, into different uh, perspectives of the world, into different cosmovisions, and into different um, knowledge, and different pronunciations, different um, perspectives, and all these uh, things that I have been mentioned to you uh, are part of the analysis of how the sociology of languages is now uh, creating a new space, a new form of interaction. So the curious thing in the sociology of the languages is that languages uh, have been exist like, like it since many years ago but uh, they are more languages that have more time in the world than other languages that uh, were created uh, before the first languages but uh, we have to make a review to uh, our culture of our own countries to then uh, understand the different perspectives uh, that uh, we have uh, from the languages so, I have been uh, studying uh, Russian, I have been studying Chinese, I have been studying English, Korean, Hindi, Arab, and uh, a little bit of Zulu, um, Hawaiian, um, let me think, other language, Japanese, uh, obviously Spanish, that's my native language and uh, a little bit of Egyptian um, and other languages that uh, are not considered on the official languages that exist in the world I'm referring to the languages that uh, we have on ancestral civilizations that uh, are founded in the stones and um, they were messages very antique from goddesses very important and uh, these goddesses lived like uh, 200 years more uh, it can be a myth but uh, remember that the myth it's part of the knowledge, it's part of the society because the nature and the energy is constantly changing so um, languages, uh, if we go to the uh, sociology, contemporary sociology uh, we have to go then for the uh, contemporary languages Contemporary languages are some of them the one that I have been learning uh, these years. Uh, uh, <clears throat> one of them, uh, Chinese. Uh, the Chinese um, have different symbols that represent different things. So uh, these symbols uh, can represent a person, can represent a tree, can represent fire, water, air. Uh, can re represent animals, places, uh, can represent parts, things and curiously um, before, I, uh, before I look to a video to a woman that make and change all the Chinese languages into symbols I have been thinking on do it too but then I started to do my investigation on the computer and then uh, appears that I have been uh, someone uh, did it before me so um, 
uh, I'm getting this uh, thing just like a comment, but uh, the, he the thing here, if we go uh, to another differences of the languages, we have the Korean. Well, the Korean uh, maybe cannot be represented by symbols because it has uh, some lines and many circles on it. So, uh, Korean, uh, it's uh, like a parallel world in different uh, cosmovision of the society. So, I think that's why uh, the way of thinking of the people it's very different depending on the language, depending on the region, depending on the climate and many things that we are going to analyze in this video, in this analysis, sociology analysis of uh, the languages. So we have the English. Well, the English is the foreign language. Well, why the English uh, have been represented for many years in the society. Well, some said that English is part of controlling your mind, it's part of controlling the world and making an hegemonic world, but uh, certainly the, uh, the people who do not know English are not, are not very well inserted on the labor uh, camp. So, that's why it's very, very important to learn English. But what happens if I start to learn English? Does my uh, natural language uh, start to get forgiven? Does uh, the new languages like Russian uh, start to get... Uh, uh, I will start forgetting Russian? Now, the thing here is that um, we are having uh, these letters and symbols different. So, like Russian uh, in, in English or in Spanish, the R are uh, changed uh, into the position into a left. And here in, in Mexico or uh, Latino America, we got the R into the right. So these are differences that uh, maybe we can't understand, but uh, Kaola maybe uh, will give us a response, the ones who, study, who are studying the Kaola. But uh, now we are not going to talk about the Kaola. This is uh, a different perspective that I have, but um, we have uh, the, the classical languages like Greek, uh, we have the classical uh, languages like Latin, Hebrew, um, and I think uh, that, uh, there, that uh, three languages are the three principal languages that we have. So, um, why I'm talking about languages? Well, because the languages divide region, regions, uh, divide uh, people, divide knowledge, divide uh, geographic areas, divide many things. But uh, when we start to learn, learn languages, um, we start to get more benefits because the process of socializations are uh, getting more involved into the people, we are understanding more their culture and how uh, these languages uh, uh, are representing something. So all the information we have in the universe, it's there, it's always there. But the thing is that we make a transcript of the information that we are having for understanding more how uh, the society works and to give a space and time for the things for them give material results to the things so that's why uh, what I, th I am thinking it's going to be the reality or it's going to be part of the truth so um, 
there is other differences uh, about the languages. The languages are constantly uh, used just by letters. But uh, we have a big difference here, very curious. Hebrew uh, takes uh, numbers into their languages and it's considered a sacred uh, languages and one of the most antique uh, languages and writing. So what happened with Hebrew? Uh, does it have a position in the world? Does it is the promised land? Or what happened with the Hebrew? Well, the Hebrew uh, languages uh, represent an historical uh, point of view, an historical um, analysis of how the languages have been uh, uh, taking this big evolution. So, mm, this is uh, an introduction um, to the sociology of the languages. This is uh, my perspectives, my ideas uh, of how, how I see the languages and how important it is to learn languages to understand the world and the different points of view that uh, the society have. So, um, watch my other videos about uh, the sociology of the sport uh, the sociology, uh, the contemporary sociology, um, the sociology of cars, the sociology of the classicals, and other videos that I have made for you, the Luciferian religion, and other videos that I have made for you, then you, qua you can understand uh, my orientations and my points of view. Because maybe you are now watching this and maybe you think he is not right or he is not uh, landing his knowledge into, into making the right thing. But the thing here is that uh, we are taking a road uh, to the sociology, we are um, uh, transforming uh, the classicals, we are transforming our perspectives. And you are transforming me because you are now watching me. I don't know your face, but uh, the thing is that um, we are getting uh, communication. And that uh, will, will help us to understand more of us together. So thank you very much for watching this video. Write uh, down um, your comments, like and share.